I'm your host, Chris Miller. This is my uh, my BFF and co-host, Chris Camozzi. We just <laughs> we just touched tips. Uh, welcome to the show. Exciting show. We're going to talk about Derek Wolf, our good friend, and him shooting a lion. We have a celebrity. Uh, is celebrity? Sure. Oh. We're gonna have a we're gonna have a guest show up in the middle of the show, who is uh, an enforcer or was an enforcer in the NHL. Yeah, I believe so. Daniel Amesbury. So right now he's the current, what do they call it? King of the rink. Ice fighting. Or hockey fights. Yeah. It's just hockey fights. There's it's the no best hockey. part of hockey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Finally, dude. He they puts, cut out all the other boring stuff. He, yeah. he fights on skates. They wear their like shoulder pads and stuff. Nice. We're I can't here. wait to see that. So I think we're approaching episode 50. Yeah, if this is uh, 46. Uh, uh, dope. Um, we're going to change the format of board of directors a bit. Um, and so this, kind of, this show is going to be a little bit... Uh, it's going to be the new format. We're, we're playing with it. We're toying with it. We're molding it. We're molding it. We're, we're shaping the future of streaming. We're, you know, we're, we're really a tech company first and a drink company second. Um, anyways, new format today, so bear with us as we kind of feel it out. Feel it out. Um, but I want to watch this clip of Diamond Hands, Daniel Amesbury, who's coming on the show later as a tease, too, for you to stick around while wow, they even walk out in their hockey gear. Yeah. Like a UFC fight. It's even like a rink octagon. Yeah. It's amazing. Dude, they hit me up yesterday because he's coming into town. They've got a bunch of NHL guys that are going to play a pond hockey game up in Grand Lake. And uh, Scott Parker's wife was like, hey, she hit me up. She's like, do you know how to skate? <laughs> and I was like, like Bambi. I don't know. I haven't done it since I was a kid. And she's like, oh, we were going to see if you wanted to play. That's a weird first question to start with. Do you skate? Well, she was going to see if I wanted to play in the pond hockey game this weekend, which would have been awesome. Yeah. I was like, you can't be- skate? I don't know. I haven't done it since I was a kid. Here we go. You don't, you don't have any windows on there that uh, you don't Yo. want to see, do you? Um, yeah, good point, Chris Camozzi. Dude, so that, that actually happened recently. Uh, a, sh- a very famous streamer on the internet was doing this exact thing, and someone found something on his desktop that he shouldn't have been looking at. There's all this deep fake porn going on right now. Have you seen this or heard about it? Yeah, it is weird. Wait, are we cutting this or no? No, we're back in. No, no, no. we can talk about that it. Was, that was a fun well, live I was moment. I say rewind the... Okay, anyways, pause this. Deep, deep fake porn. These guys put a face of Drew Barrymore on a, act, on a body who looks like it might be her, and it looks like that person having sex. And there's all this hubbub about is it illegal to do that are you are you basically digitally you know like almost assaulting someone assaulting somebody thank you uh yeah i mean i would think that's illegal more than anything it's just creepy. basically it is creepy so this guy was streaming had one of those up someone caught him and now he's in deep doo-doo just because he was watching it even not because he did it so yeah weird this is at the River Creek Casino. I used to fight there. Hi, baby. In uh, Edmonton. Nice. You fought in Edmonton? Yeah, quite a few times. This, this ice cream. Is Edmonton a dump? Is it nice? Is the, it- the casino is awesome. Edmonton is cold as hell. But this River Creek Casino has a full ice rink inside with bars around it. So they have hockey games and then the casino's there. You can sit there and eat and drink and just like watch this stuff. I think it's my connection. Ugh. So is there round? There is rounds. One of two. Yeah. Oh, I want that beard, dude. <laughs> beard envy. Wow, they even keep the helmets on. It's wild. Yikes. So I wonder what happens if you fall. We got to ask him. I don't know all the rules to this. Take notes, dude. I want to ask him. Get off my back, bro. Oh, okay. Okay, bro. I got it all locked up here. All right. <laughs> don't. Argue with me. I got, it, fight you. I got it locked in the vault. <laughs> Steel trap. 
Okay, so uh, Daniel's coming on the show. I'll, I'm kind of excited to talk about hockey fighting. I think I'm going to start watching this. I could see this taking off. No, but in a fight, there's weight limits. Yeah, I know. This is a, this is a fight. It's not hockey. True. Good question. I don't know. Write it down. It's all up here, bro. <laughs> it's all up here, bro. Okay, uh, so um, our friend Derek Wolf was recently in the news. Uh, he shot a mountain lion, and it's gone viral. It's been on TMZ. I talked to him yesterday. He said he's getting death threats and hate mail. And I'm it, sure he's really scared about that. He is definitely not. He's a fucking mountain of a man. He's a mountain of a man and apparently very good with a bow and arrow. Yeah, and he's a good boxer. Is he? Yeah, he's old mitts for him quite a bit. I know he wants to get back to it, so he'll probably be down here more. What do you mean by good boxer? I mean, we talk about it. These NFL guys are quicker than you think. Mm, yeah. Like, for his size, obviously he has power, but he, he has, like, fundamentals for it, too. He's pretty good. Um, I'd spot Derek. Yeah, let's do it. Let's get it. Let's, let's book that fight. I'll ref it. Um, yeah, so talked to him yesterday, him and his wife, and... Uh, yeah, they're getting a ton of heat for this. Uh, it's been all over the world. They're getting, they're even getting mail from like Germany, Spain. Yeah. Here's the thing though: is like, <clears throat> so first off, it was legal, that totally L legal, legal. Yeah, I know. Sometimes I can say it, and you're like, do you say illegal or legal? Yeah, it was legal. He had a tag for it. That mountain lion had been killing dogs and stuff in the area. These are apex predators. They're super territorial. They have, I forget how far a mountain lion's like territory is. I want to say it's like 150 miles. Like it's pretty broad, but they're killing machines, right? And all the people coming at them just don't really understand too. One, hunting preserves a lot more like animals, conservation, all of that stuff. How do you pull up my screen? The money that goes into hunting helps keep like our parks all of this stuff so it's kind of people will disagree but it, it's a way of life like that mountain lion will hunt you too don't get it twisted people that are mad about that if you're out hiking that thing will kill you yeah so to your point totally legal first of all when i saw this photo i was like what a fucking beast yeah, and i'm derek's, talking about derek look at the head on it like so derek's what six six ish maybe a little taller he said yesterday he was 280 and i was like bullshit I You're mean, like 295. And that cat with him looks enormous. It is enormous. Apparently, according to uh, sources, that being Derek's wife, the way they angled it made it look a bit bigger than it, than it is, but Derek's like, it's huge. It's a Yeah, you do that. Did, like the Instagram model butt trick on that line? You did. Not all hunters <laughs> doing fish. That's yeah, why fishermen yeah, yeah. hold it out. Um, oh, look at the number one comment on there, guys. It's the yeah. best you can come up with. Is that the, what do you mean? Is that the number one or was it the first? Do they rank these? No, they put them, like, they show your friends' comments. Mine's probably on there. I put so sick, by the way. I put so sick because I meant, yo, that's so sick, like, dope. And it got 79 likes. I think people thought I was saying, like, you're sick. I'd like to clarify that, by the way. I felt bad about it. I felt like I should have re-commented on it. Yeah, so sick. Commented back, like, as in cool. Am I on there? I, I got more likes than you did. Uh, no, there's some other comments in there. If no, you no, no. Down. But I got more likes. Than I was you did. battling. Let's see. Or I wasn't battling. I, I commented on a few people. Okay. So, so totally legal. Yeah. I mean, Derek, what a beast. He hiked in, he did it with a bow and arrow too, which apparently according to things I looked into, people were more mad that it was a bow and arrow, which I don't understand. Hunting a, hunting a mountain lion with a bow and arrow is risky business. Yeah. The mountain lion has a lot more of a chance. Yeah. It's incredibly risky. It, people people are always going to get mad about hunting stuff, but they don't understand. The same people that are mad about hunting, you know, deer, elk, all that stuff, go and buy chicken from the store that come from caged farms where they're... What do you think everyone's so upset about? Like, what is it? I mean, if you what, were to guess. I know you're not an expert, but what, if you were to guess. So, it could have been any animal, honestly, but I would say because it's, it's a mountain lion. Look, they are cool animals. I, I, I love animals, but I love hunting, too. But it's a way of life, right? I don't know. I, want, I wouldn't be surprised if Derek ate that thing. No, they did. Yeah. They made burgers the next night. They said it tastes sweet. So what, but what do you think the, like, the problem is? Like, people are mad because it's, they think it's, it's cruel. Mur it's murder? They think, yeah, I mean, is it murder? And, yeah, but 
I didn't say that. It's, I'm saying other it's people. It's to survive. Not just to survive. It started to survive, right? And he eats these animals. He's a big hunter. He doesn't really buy stuff from the grocery store like meat <clears> and all of that because he hunts. So what's wrong with that? Honestly, when, when you hunt animals, they live a better life. Think about it. If you're an animal, would you mm-hmm. rather get killed in the wild, you know, after having a few years of being wild or be a cow that grows up on a fucking pasture and your whole life is just kind of standing around eating, waiting to get slaughtered? It sounds like most people. Yeah. Just, just your eating elk, food. Like, they get to live Waiting to life. die. Not yeah. doing much. Those guys just pulled up. Oh, dope. Let's get them in. Yeah. Hello, everybody. I would like to take this quick moment let you know this show is sponsored by Fit Soda. Run the commercial. If you don't drink Fit Soda, then f*** you. It's got aminos for recovery and electrolytes for f***ing hydration. All my friends drink Fit Soda and they're cool as f*** like me. I got a model girlfriend, she drinks Fit Soda. I got a fireman buddy, he drinks Fit Soda. Construction workers, they drink Fit Soda. Every girl you're attracted to drinks Fit Soda. This camera guy right here, he drinks Fit Soda. It doesn't get any better than this. It's time to get your Fit Soda. Make sure you go to FitSoda.com if you want to be cool like me. The best part about Fit Soda? Zero sugar. Sugar sucks too. Sugar. Ugh, I hate sugar. Man, f- this. I'm out of here. Diamond Hands Daniel Amesbury. Let's go. In the house. Did I get it right the first time? Yeah. Thank you, God. <clears throat> Thank you, baby Jesus. Well, welcome to Colorado, bro. So tell everyone why you're in town. Yeah. We actually watched, <clears throat> by the way, we watched and live streamed one of your fights oh, in nice. the hockey octagon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is dope. The ice box. Is that what they call it? Yeah, the ice box. They officially named it the ice box. <laughs> That's awesome. I was saying. The River Cree. Yeah, I used to yeah. fight there back in like 2007 and eight. Is Edmonton, I don't mean to shit on Canada, but is Edmonton a shitty town? Like, is it horrible? I think so, personally. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry well, for everyone from Edmonton. Well, yeah, <laughs> who cares? I, I didn't do a whole you lot can mo- You know, you can move if you live there, right? Yeah. <laughs> and that, that, Why is it a shitty town? It's just I like, don't know. It's just a weird layout. Weird. I don't know. I don't know. what. To, I, I'm always like looking around. I'm like, why is this place so odd there's just not much going on it's like a depressing film but the river cree <laughs> the river cree is sweet like yeah, we had nice. such a good show there we did two shows there and uh they, they have a casino hotel and stuff there and it was pretty cool around there but uh yeah i don't know i so, I, I live not far from edmonton for a bit when i worked on the pipeline and we'd go there and, and party and stuff but uh i don't know I was never a huge fan so you grew up you grew up in vancouver playing hockey uh, which by the way for those of you in america who have never spent time in canada you should it's dope Number two, I didn't realize how big of a game. First of all, I fucking love hockey. I played rugby yeah. in college. I'm I'm violent it's a different by nature. Sport. It's no, I I even I even was upset when they kind of, and and I'm sure you have some opinions on this, but when they kind of softened hockey, like I I didn't love that part. Yeah. Uh, but when you go to Canada, it is such a big sport in Canada. Like it's everything there. It's like, like the sport. Yeah, yeah, like ESPN there's even different. It's yeah. just all hockey. And Pretty even the much. way the kids grow up playing hockey from like academies, like you, right? You're like 13, you get picked to go. It's like soccer in yeah. Europe, right? So in Canada, it's a little bit different. Well, it's changing a little bit more now, but like the cool part about hockey in Canada is um, the the path of, of playing hockey in Canada. You'd go, um, you know, you'd play for a club team or like a, your city's team. Mm. So like I'm from Maple Ridge, BC, just outside of Vancouver. I played for Ridge Meadows, their team. And then you go to juniors. So juniors, you'd be between 15 and 21. But I, juniors is a big deal, right? Like it, it, you get signed. It's like part of a pro program, right? Uh, yeah, it just depends on like what. There's a bunch of different junior levels. Like they have major junior and then junior A, junior B and stuff like that. But just going through junior and then after junior is where you'd go pro. But the thing about junior uh, junior hockey, like there's fighting. So like for me, I was fighting when I was 16, whereas the American route is more high school, college, then pro. So it's yeah. like the American route is like a little bit softer hockey along the way. So that's why like generally always the tougher game has came from Canada. But now as it's changing, it's kind of like the route in general is kind of going more college route anyways, but the way the game is, it's just changing. But uh, yeah, it's been a, it, it was a unique route coming from Canada. It's where you got more of a blue collar player coming from Canada. Uh, yeah. A lot of years. I love that you're allowed to like brawl it out when your kids still. 
I fucking love it. Oh, yeah. yeah. I love it. That's when you want to do it the most, probably. Which yeah. is ironic, yeah. too, because, like, the... I don't know if you guys have seen this. You probably have. They're calling Denver the hockey capital of basically the world. We won the, oh, yeah. we won the Stanley, the college national championship. We're kind of dominating in hockey right now. Yeah, DU. That <laughs> yeah. DU. Denver yeah. University. Yeah. yeah. They've, they've always been good. Yeah, I used to work out down at DU. That's where my strength and conditioning coach was there the hockey coach in like the schools oh, nice. strength and conditioning. So I'd work out with a lot of the hockey players back then. And it was cool. They started like boxing and stuff in the locker nice. room, but then people started getting knocked out and the coach was like, <laughs> we got to stop doing this. Cause they were just throwing bombs with like boxing gloves with each other, the team. Yeah. They were just gunning them. So when we were in minor hockey, so we would have been, I don't know, like so we started doing it when we were like probably start when you're 10, but there's a thing called helmets and gloves. And that was just like a thing. So like, Coaches are kind of like, we'd have one guy watching the door of the dressing room. We'd lock the dressing room. <laughs> and fight club. One guy would be looking out the, the first roll look, of fight club. Looking is. through the crack to make sure the coach isn't coming. And then you get, you'd pick two guys and they both put their hockey helmets with their cages on and their, and their hockey gloves on. And they just scrap. That's amazing. And, and you just hear the cages. Cock, 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 cock. And it would just be, the coach would come and they'd be like, okay, shut it down. We'd try and shut it down. But uh, I always say, if I'm coaching a team now, I would just give them boxing gloves because wearing getting hit with a helmet on is probably a lot worse than getting hit. Just is it? Why? Yeah. Your whole head gets rocked, right? I was just thinking that I would, I wouldn't, the helmet would be worse. Way worse. Can we, yeah. Real quick, I want to get, get, get your background too and how you got to this. But uh, every time I watch a hockey fight, I'm like, why don't they just pull their helmets off? Like, why isn't protocol to just pull the it helmet used, off? It used to be, but now when the world started to get soft, they started to change those rules. I Cause guess, th but. there's gotta be a ton of broken hands and fucked up injuries that yeah. happen from hitting someone in the helmet. Well, like, I mean, back in the day, like back in parks day, like they didn't even have visors. Like most of them didn't have visors. So they'd be okay with not having a visor. Then they can fight that way. Cause the big thing is slipping and hitting your head on the ice. Mm. Like people uh, yeah. die like that. Mm. So it's like, you mean in a fight, in a hockey fight. Yeah. Cause you can slip. If you knock a guy out and he's on skates and he slides back, slips back, mm. hits his head. Like people definitely have died like that. But now that everybody has visors, it's like, well, are you going to punch this guy's visor? Like, yeah, it's, it's like when you see a fight happen in a football game. You're like, yeah. guys, what are yeah. you doing right now? <laughs> yeah. So that's why, like, even in this Ice Wars thing, like, we wear hockey helmets and then just MMA gloves. So yeah. I, I didn't think about slipping. That makes sense. That does make yeah, sense. that's the main thing. Right? You catch yeah. a charge for that if somebody were to, like, die? Well, there was one guy I played against, uh, Corey Fulton. I, I fought him a couple times, but he legit was in a hockey fight, and the guy he fought died. Legit. That does sucks. he go to does he yeah. go to jail for that? Or? No, no, it was it's just a part of the game. Oh yeah, it just happened like freak that accident, sucks. freak accident. How, like, if you're listening to this, how do you not immediately become a hockey fan? That people can die in fighting. Yeah, literally. <laughs> how are you not wanting to tune into that? <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. but just the speed of the game. I remember the first time I saw an Avs game, and I was you know, um, I'd only seen it on TV, and for whatever reason, it's just faster in real life. Like it's just so visceral in real life. But the speed of the game, the changing in and out, the fighting, the it's such a fast-paced, fun game to watch. Yeah, it doesn't really stop. It does. So, like, yeah, the line the, changes are all live. Like The energy shift, too. Like, you know, anybody that plays the game or, or is around the game lots, just how much the energy shift changes. And, like, a lot of people don't realize, like, everybody thinks, like, oh, you're just fighting because you're mad. Whereas, like, a lot of times, like, you know, so, you know, I, the, let's go back to why I'm here in the first place. So, Scott Parker, who used to be my fighting coach in, Den in Denver when I played for legend. Denver. NHL tough guy, legend. Yeah, yeah, beat everybody up. He's got a tattoo across his chest that says, watch this. So, when they grab his, <laughs> they grab his jersey, all you see is, watch That's this. Like, it's the last thing I want to see when I'm fighting a guy. It's a legend move. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so Parks, Parks, and he has Parker's Platoon and uh, Taboo Social Club, and they brought me out. They got a, a pond hockey tournament going on this weekend, so they brought me out. But, um, yeah, so the whole winding back of, of um, with fighting in sports and fighting in hockey is, like, a lot of people don't realize that sometimes you might not even be mad at the guy. So it's, like, say my team's down a couple goals and the energy's flat. Like, you can see it. Like, the bench, nobody's really mm. got any energy because the other team's buzzing. They're, like, they're, they're all over us, all over us. Well, sometimes as a fighter myself – I'll just go up to the guy, the other fighter, and be like, hey, man, can you give me one? You know, like, <laughs> I, I could use one right now. Like, I want to get the boys going. And, you know, it's a kind of a mutual respect. It's like, okay, well, I'll give you this one. And then uh, when, I need, when I need one in a couple of weeks down in your arena or whatever. It's fucking amazing. So it's kind of like a mutual respect that way. So that's one reason. Or obviously another reason would be, like, you hit a guy on my team, and I'm just going to sell that. I saw so. that documentary on Netflix. I think you're – I think – Yeah. Your Our, Ice Guardians, I think. Yeah, bro, and I didn't – so, like, was already a fan of hockey – I'm obviously, I train, I'm a fight fan, I played rugby, I love violence, you know, all that stuff. 
I see this documentary and it was the first part was about Wayne Gretzky and how his enforcer followed him to every team. He wouldn't be traded without him. How pivotal enforcers are on a team. Like it, they manage like the entire game. I didn't, I didn't even think of it from an energy standpoint. Yeah. But some of those fights are just to get the boys going. Yeah. Yeah. But how pivotal a role that enforcer plays on a team yeah. is insane. Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, if you haven't seen it, Ice Guardians, it's on Netflix still, right? Yeah. Yeah. Adam Scorgy. Yeah. I think is scored it. Yeah, so Parker's high school high school pal. He's the one who made the documentary, and oh, it's a great doc. Great so documentary. Good. No, they broke it down so different because even for me, like I grew up watching hockey and stuff, and I just thought they fought to fought or fought to fight. And um, yeah, you can't see DJ DJ Parker's here. His dad is one of the the main guys they follow around in the show. But just talking about how like they would skate up to each other they even had mics on they had them like on camera being like hey next period let's go and then yeah there was just so much more to it and then when they got into how the enforcers actually cleaned up the game because like fouls were less because well yeah those like open face like cross checks that happen when someone's not looking that's what your enforcer is that to to check that other guy right like you can't just tee off on my on my guy yeah, You're going to exactly. have to deal with this me. consequence. So perfect example for me. I say it all the time. Like, like we were talking earlier, the game's getting softer. Like it's changing, right? Like mm. you can see it's changing kind of the, is that why goals are so much higher now. The game, uh, like, they're just trying to make it, they're just trying to make it that way. But it's like, you know, like when I watch NHL now, it's just like, it's not like it was like when mm. I go watch like old NHL games, I'm like on the edge of the seat. Yeah. Like I'm like fired up. But like now, like I watch it, I'm like, wow, it's amazing to watch. These guys are super skilled, but I'm not like, I don't feel like I'm swimming with the sharks like mm. I used to when I was watching. So, uh, but yeah, like the one thing I seen or the one big difference I say is like, how many concussions does Sidney Crosby have today? I, I don't know. I don't know exactly what the number is, but I know he's like had way too many concussions. Like if he has a couple more, it could be career ender. Whereas like yeah. Wayne Gretzky, like, I don't even know if that guy had a concussion. Like he got hit a couple times and everybody. Wait, why like, is that though? That's interesting. Because no, because Wayne Gretzky had Marty McSorley on his line. So nobody would touch Wayne Gretzky. Whereas nowadays they're trying to get rid of fighting and they're changing the game. So now you can cross check a guy Fuck, in the isn't face. That, isn't that how life works? Like yeah. we try to make things, we try to dumb shit down. Yeah. No. So there's two lessons that I hear out of that. One's accountability. Yeah. You're going to have to pay a consequence. We live in that world now. There's no consequences for fucking anything. Yeah. But the other one being um, when you when you unintentionally try to make something safer, like it's happened in football, like the better gear gets in football, you're seeing more injuries because these yeah. dudes can just tee off. There's yeah. no like those helmets get better so they can literally yeah. run through a wall. They just dive them. face first. So this is interesting. Down. In hockey, you're saying and for those explain it to people who don't know, it's essentially they stopped like cross checking. You can't hit they somebody just when they're not. Trying looking. to make the game a little bit tighter. It's more of like a college hockey game now where it's like everybody there was never fighting in college hockey, but everybody knew when you watch a college game, you're gonna see guys getting speared or slashed or cross checked because the only per- the only thing they have to worry about is getting two minutes. Like if I cross check you in the face, well, in the NHL now, if if you, Chris comes and jumps me because I cross checked you in the face, well, Chris is going to end up getting a five minute major. We're going to end up on the power play, and he's not even going to do it because the way the NHL is set up, he's going to put his team in too li- like in a really bad Vulnerable spot. spot yeah. Whereas like back in the day, it's like I cross check you in the face. He comes in, he makes me fight him. I have no choice. And it's like, maybe he gets two minutes extra. But at the end of the day, I'm not even going to cross check you in the face because I don't mm. want to deal with Scott Parker that's going to roll in and regulate. You know? Right, right. So it's like nowadays, it's like there's no real accountability. So you have some players that can just go away. And the only thing they have to worry about is getting a penalty. So they'll so, go hit, elbow a guy in the head like Sidney Crosby. Whereas if you elbowed Sidney, Sidney Crosby... It, like back in the old NHL days or the days, if Scott Parker was on Sidney Crosby's line, I guarantee you Sidney Crosby would have zero concussions right now. Wow. Guarantee. And you're saying because, so one more time, Sidney Crosby's getting teed off on more. Mm-hmm. And because there's no, because the enforcement's become less. They're essentially putting the policing of the game in the referee's hand. Wow. And they're trying to take the cards away essentially from the enforcers because they're trying to get away from the enforcers. And by doing so, there's no how, real how are they accountability. Doing that? Like, are they just so, so the calling, more fines? Yeah, they're basically just or calling penalty. tighter penalties, like mm-hmm. instigator penalties. Like, if 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 I came in to stand up for someone and I jumped a guy and he didn't drop his gloves, they're probably just going to give my team is going to be on the penalty kill for five minutes or whatever. Yeah, it man. just puts us in a bad spot. Whereas, like back in the day, it was like, well, yeah, you shouldn't have cross checked the guy in the face. Like, of course you're going to get jumped. 
Is there blowback from the hockey community against NHL about this kind of stuff? Yeah, major. Like, for people, honestly, even, like, lots of the guys that are playing the game, like, I bet you even guys, like, guys that are good players are probably saying the same thing. Like, I'm sure Sidney Crosby wouldn't complain if he had Scott Parker on his line because I guarantee you he'd be still putting up the same numbers and nobody would touch him. But mm. it's like nowadays it's just changed, right? Like it's they're trying to make the game safer, but it's turning into more of a college game where it's it's essentially a dirtier game. There's way more stick, like way more slashing, way more dirty stuff where and like dirty hits where there's no real accountability behind it. It's just, oh, I get a penalty, oh, big deal. So if I'm mad at, or if I want to get back at a team or whatever, for whatever reason, instead of fighting somebody, I'm just going to elbow their best player on the head, uh, you know? And then, the, and then, oh, how do we get their guy back? We elbow their guy in the head? Like, it's, it's a joke, so. Yeah. yeah. It, uh, like, Scott Parker had the best nickname, the sheriff. The sheriff, yeah, exactly. He's, like, he's out there enforcing the rules. You yeah, know? exactly. Like, I think he even said in that documentary, like, if you hit, um, who was it back then? Was it Sackick? Yeah. Yeah, soccer. He's like, I'm coming for you. Yeah. And, like, they know that. Yeah. So then they lay off. And, it like, he, he was the sheriff. He invo- enforced the rules. Yeah. So. He was such a badass. I remember, so, <laughs> when Parks came, I had to be probably the first time that we met. I was probably 22 or 23. I was playing uh, in the Central League. Uh, if we were affiliated with the Avalanche. So, Parker ended up coming in and he's like, they're like, Hey, this guy, uh, Derek Armstrong, he was my head coach and he knew parks. And he's like, Hey, come work with this young buck. He's a, you know, he's a pretty scrappy guy, but you know, he could use sharpen the sword, help him sharpen the sword. So parks comes down and we start working together and he, and he starts telling me these things. I'm like, what does that mean for people who don't like, are, uh, working together? Like he's showing just you- like he came on the ice and like did some like kind of grappling stuff after practice with me. Cause like uh-huh. a lot of hockey fighting has to do with like the way you're grabbing the guy tying each other up it's almost like stand like i do like i like back home when i was training for ice wars i was doing some like stand-up greco-roman stuff a little bit of like stand yeah yeah just like stand-up grappling essentially we're gonna film some of this to show it in the podcast with you two yeah, yeah, yeah. let's do it yeah, yeah we'll do some Dope. of that yeah so then uh so he starts telling me about how he's like hey he's like aims your goal when you fight somebody is to make them never want to fight you again <laughs> i was like Okay, that's a good. He's like, okay, that's legit. Like, he's like, yeah, because it makes your job like easier, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. my first pro season, I think I had forty three fights in forty one games. You know? <laughs> forty three. <laughs> After I met Parks, I cut that number in half. So, and it was good. Like, I didn't, yeah, yeah. You know, I didn't need to fight as much because everybody's like, nah, I'd rather not fight this guy. He's gonna punch me in the ribs and stick his thumb down my throat. <laughs> so, like, he, he's like, hey, there's, there's no rules in hockey fighting. He's he's grabbing me, he's choking, he's taking my jersey and going like this. He's twisting it and choking me with my jersey while he sticks his my thumb his thumb down my throat and he's punching me in like my very top rib. He's like, see, that sucks, right? And I'm like, yeah, Parks, please that stop. sucks, dude. Yeah, yeah, stop, yeah. Stop. yeah. And he's I got these it. giant hands. <laughs> so yeah, so that was my introduction to Scott Parker, and I was like, right away, I was just like, oh man, like I'm so glad I wasn't around the early 2000s fighting this guy. Yeah, yeah. and Ice Beast, Ice Guardians showed that there's like so much more form to it. You know, like they're not just swinging. That's why I'm, I'm curious to work with you because I want to see like how you guys do it and stuff too. Parker, I think it was Parks in the documentary. Maybe it was one of the other guys. They were talking about like different grips they grab, yeah. use like. There's a lot more to it than when you just get granular. Swinging. Yeah, it's, I think UFC's like that. You and I talk about that all the time when people watch a fight and you don't realize that him putting his elbow on a guy's face or neck for that long really has an impact. People don't notice those little subtleties. People yeah. who aren't around the sport or don't know how to fight, yeah, don't notice those little things. Like yeah. I would have never thought of that to stick your oh, thumb in someone's. Neither did I. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's super smart. Yeah. So like that. Yeah, that was kind of like the one thing that for that. I think is like a staple in fighting in sports that like a lot of people don't even really know, or maybe don't really like know how to identify it. But I'll always tell people like watch Mayweather, like the shoulder roll, yeah, the shoulder roll. Like that is like, I'm just giving away my secret. That's like the staple in a hockey fight. It's the shoulder roll, but your hands out and you're grabbing and you're rolling with your, you're rolling Uh, with your shoulder while you're grabbing. Right. Yeah. Like that to me is like, that's my bread and butter is I'll roll, I'll roll my shoulder. I'm, I feel like I'm always in a safe place uh, and I roll when it comes and then I'm coming back. Like, it's just like a timing thing, you know? So, yeah. but that's just like one of the very few things. Like I've, I've prided myself on studying people. Like I'm kind of a nerd when it comes to hockey fighting. So like, yeah. you know, I've watched all different types of styles and, and uh, obviously got lots of reps in. We, we actually, <laughs> I play, so back home in Canada, we play box lacrosse. I don't know if you're familiar at all. I actually just played my first pro box lacrosse game last weekend. 
What is that? Which, by the way, if they if they upped the fucking violence in lacrosse, I'd be a fan. Yeah. Regular lacrosse in the United States, no offense to anyone who plays yeah. it to me, is horrible. Yeah, like field lacrosse, it's like soccer kind of. It's boring. Yeah, it's like everybody's too we far We used apart. to make fun of the rugby guys. Used to fucking pick on the lacrosse guys yeah. in college. So we'd you'd kick probably, them off the field. We'd be like, get out of here, nerd. Yeah, you'd probably like the, you'd <laughs> probably like the box lacrosse. Like in box lacrosse, we legit, like you're allowed to fight. Like guys will square up, take your helmets off, go I to center. That. And it's like, you're on foot though. So like it is... <laughs> Can tee off. Yeah. Oh yeah, like it is like it is it is wild, right? So so yeah, but uh so we do that too. So it's kind of like in Canadian blood to be all our sports. So I want to come to Canada and play <laughs> box lacrosse. Yeah. Yeah. Our two national Let's sports go. in Canada, people think it's just hockey, but like it's box lacrosse and hockey are both our national sports. It actually used to only be lacrosse. That's box amazing. Lacrosse. Rugby's big in Canada too. Yeah, it is. Yeah, high school. That's like one of our big high school sports that pretty and much curling. Has. I fucking love curling. Shut I've up. Never, you went hey, from I, fighting in rugby and I hockey to curling. curling. I've never, I've the, never curled. The there's, the, a, there's a curling <laughs> center like right down the street. He, he's like fanatical. I've never it. curled in my life. How about that? It's great. <laughs> Canadian, never curled. We got you mic'd up. You jumping in here? Yeah, sure. I remember <laughs> one time my dad got. Wait, um, introduce yourself. I'm DJ Parker, friends with all these guys. Yeah. Son of a Stanley Cup champion who's a badass. Let's go. A mom that's even more of a gangster. But, uh, <laughs> she is. You got to meet her. Yeah, she got a mohawk. Uh, she'll, she'll shoot you. She don't give a shit. <laughs> but um, I don't even forgot what I was saying. I'm sorry. All good. But, uh, yeah, sorry, I lost my. He's here. Now there. he's got a mic. All good. So how'd you get? How did you get from? So you're playing hockey in Canada. How did you get into this Ice Wars game? Yeah, so like I was talking to DJ about this, like kind of going in right into my like power of the mind kind of stuff. I honestly feel like I just manifested it. Like I had something written on my fridge for like two years saying I am a pro fighter. And I swear, I looked at this every day for two years and I did nothing to be a pro fighter. I wasn't really like training or anything like that. And then all of a sudden this event landed on my lap and it kind of just was one of my friends sent it to me like, hey, like this AJ Galante. I don't know if you've seen like uh, on Netflix, there's a documentary called Untold Crime and Penalties. I haven't seen it. And it's about this, uh, I guess. Untold crime. So, so called, I don't know if he's some mob guy buys his seventeen. Oh, yeah. oh I did see yeah, that. Buys his a seven, fucking train wreck. Yeah, so he buys Holy his seventeen yeah, year old like son in the of trash hockey business. Team. Yeah, yeah, and they go wild. Yeah, yeah I yeah. have seen it. So he buys his seventeen year old <laughs> son a, a freaking pro hockey team, and like, imagine how cool that would be. You're a WWF fan. You're like, okay, now imagine I how bad team. we would have all fucked that up. Oh yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> so full circle. I watched the documentary, and then it ended up happening. Like my buddy messaged me. He's like, hey, this. You follow this AJ Galante guy. I was like, yeah, I know who he is. He's like, check his Instagram right now. And he was posting like, hey, there's Ice Wars. I was like, Ice Wars sounds right up my alley. I don't know what it is yet, but probably <laughs> right up my alley. So sounds it's, awesome. it's, it's a it. hockey fighting tournament, essentially, is what it is. And I'm like, okay, I'm, I DM'd this guy every day for like, a couple weeks like he was responding but he was kind of like yeah 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 like i get it and i'm just like <laughs> still sending him videos i'm like dude like i don't care who it is i'll fight anybody like so finally like it eventually started panning out and then he's like hey dude like you know this is the weight class like it's over 200 pounds but like you're gonna be the smallest guy like so there is weight classes there is now and it's starting to be more it started out with just two so yeah because that guy that we played the clip on he looks like grizzly adams with the big beard yeah that guy looks huge Derek parker i think Derek yeah, parker, it was yeah. parker something. yeah 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 so that's Derek parker the not as tough parker <laughs> no relation <laughs> no relation i mean he's tough. he's pretty tough too though like he he has a he really big, big reputation yeah he he's just a big boy so everybody I fought in that. I had to fight three times in one night. I was just going to ask. Tournament. You said tournament. I didn't yeah. know it was at all. Yeah, so I fought three times in one night. I was the smallest guy. So I came in. I'm six foot. I was at about 224 at the time. Like, I was, like, heavy for. Damn, bro. Um, yeah, like, that was, like, the heaviest I've been on the ice in a long time. So came in at 224, and he was, uh, first guy was uh, 6'2", I think, maybe 265. Second, oh, so I won that. Went to the next one, Easy. and that guy was a little bit shorter, six two, or no, I think he might have been the same, but he's about six two. But he was two ninety or two eighty five. But he was shredded. I like this you. guy was <laughs> cranked. Yeah. This guy was cranked. And then, uh, and then, so then I beat him, and now I'm going to the finals to fight uh, Justin Sawyer, who was six six two ninety five. Yikes! And that was the guy I fought in the finals. So. And that's that's six six without skates. Right? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. So like seven. Yeah, because skates give yeah. you what like four inches, yeah, three yeah. inches. So yeah, it was uh, it was fun, man. Like it was. Uh, I just honestly, I just the way I seen it, and I'm sure you know everything about this. It's like my training camp. I just took one day at a time and every day in my head i said as long as i win this day 
and I win every day from now until my fight, then the fight is mine. That's a know? great so, life lesson, by the way. Yeah. Just win today. Yeah. That's it. One day at a time. Yeah. So that's pretty much what I did in my camp. I had a really crazy mindset and I just got after it every day. I had a really good tribe of friends around me that were like kind of stepped up. My one friend started training me and then my other friend, you know, Caleb Starnes. Yeah. Yeah. So Caleb Starnes, he was training me as well. Oh, so really? He's a friend of mine back so from Vancouver. So when you were, when the ice war, when the ice war thing came up, were you thinking at the time, maybe MMA or like UFC or any of those other options? Um, so like I've boxed a little bit. I like did the I, rough and rowdy for box yeah. tool. Oh, so okay. I actually, I bought boxing was always in the back of my mind. I always thought like MMA might be a little overwhelming because I have to now worry about a few things where like, Oh, at least if it boxed, like I don't, I've never done jujitsu. I've done like two kickboxing classes. So like, yeah, I felt like the MMA at this point, it'd be really hard to get into, but There's I was so like, much. well, I could maybe see myself getting into a little bit of boxing or something. And then, uh, so I won the original Ice Wars and then the second one, well now AJ is like my manager in some, a boxing career that I'm kind of starting now with like, nice. we're going rough and rowdy to start and see how it goes. I got one more fight and then hopefully after that I'll fight for the belt. And then we're going to see where it goes after that. AJ is talking about going pro at some point, just kind of going with the, where the wind blows us right now. And yeah. Dope. So wait a minute. Are you not considered professional then? Like, do you get no. paid for these? Yeah. So okay. rough and rowdies, I don't know how they got it figured Did out. Do you mean Ice Wars or rough and rowdies? Well, yeah, I guess Ice Wars wouldn't be considered in yeah, professional fighting. They're both kind of like in their own thing, right? So Ice Wars new. is like, it's new sport, so it doesn't really count as like a sanction. It is sanctioned, I don't know. Is it? And then Rough and Rowdy is like, I don't know if it's an, I just still haven't figured it out. Is it an exhibition? Like we get paid, but we're amateurs. Like if you have a pro fight, you can't fight in Rough and Rowdy. Yeah. Mm. And technically if you get paid, you're considered a pro. That's interesting. So it's weird, right? Like it's, I think it's just like kind of loopholes. They, they have certain city places they can do it kind of thing but is uh, rough and rowdy run by barstool yeah, yeah it, it is, is yeah oh it you know what i'll honestly say like rough and rowdy is one of the f funnest events i've ever been to i know i want to go to one it I was, was saying you should apply to be in it we should get you dude, in. let's go to his next on, one in yeah. west virginia. Who do they, but who do they match go. you up with do they west, match you up with I'm somebody in, here i'm in west virginia on march 3rd is my next one. Oh, yeah? have you ever been to west let's virginia go. no it's fucking awesome. Is it? I heard. I heard. <laughs> yeah. awesome. So I, I've heard mixed reviews. When I sold my first company, I was young. I got into stand up for a while and was doing stand up all over the all over the place. And I got booked at this show in West Virginia, and it was terrifying. It was at a <laughs> yacht club on a river, and it was not a fucking yacht club. It was, it was like canoes and yeah, moonshine <laughs> <laughs> distillery yeah. in the back. Canoes and tin like, toppers, like those pedal bikes you yeah. to have on the river. Yeah, yeah. it was fucking gangster. Little shit. outboard That's aluminum, awesome. fourteen foot yeah. aluminum. It was rough. So you got you got. I didn't it. do well either. If you guys are wondering, rough and my, rowdy. My city March. humor didn't work well in West Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so March third is rough and rowdy, and then uh, Ice Wars is going to be following up right after it, and then uh, when yeah. is that? Do you know? I don't know yet. No, they were they're kind of. Ironing things out right now. How do they resources. how do they match you with somebody? For rough and rowdy? Yeah. Uh rough and rowdy. Some of the fights cowboy. I've seen look like they're train wrecks. Like my my first fight, like it was I think eight seconds or twelve yeah. seconds. It was on it was on uh, when yeah. we were watching YouTube, it was under the one that we did watch. It said world's fastest KO. Yeah, it's it was pretty funny, watch it, man. Dude, like I said though, like that was in Providence. There had to be eight thousand people there. And it was <laughs> they play music the whole time. Maddie so, Maddie, there you go. Yeah, right there, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Wait, where's the actual knockout? Was that your opponent? Yeah. Look at that. Is that a? Are you rocking the mullet? Oh yeah. Was that guy? Attic, baby. Was that guy? That I would, I would still have the handlebars, but I I, tr I actually trimmed. It. I was trying to trim it, and I accidentally nicked them. So. Yeah, I've watched these before. They're just like a spectacle. It yeah, does look it's awesome. one minute rounds, so it's like non like you just gotta brawl. Like it's not it's tough to box one minute. Diamond hands. Oh, nice body blow. <laughs> right on Portnoy's lap. He landed right on Portnoy's lap. It does look like a, just a big party. It looks awesome. Were yeah, you talking shit to Big Cat and oh, dude, You know what? It's hard. Like the interview part, I thought I'd be better, but it's like they're just so slick and they're like comedians. Yeah. So it was, uh, who was it? I can't even remember his name. Who's the guy that does those funny interviews all the time? They like chop them up. Oh, you're Caleb? talking about Caleb. Caleb. Yeah. Yeah, Caleb. Caleb. That's who interviewed me. He was Caleb was in a Santa suit. <laughs> he started interviewing me and Perfect. I just got jammed up. Like I just wasn't as slick as I wanted to be. Yeah, I watched yeah. it after. I'm like, okay, like that. Like I don't even, I'm like the boxing to me now, like rough and rowdy is about the promotion. You know, it's like anything now. 
But now I'm like more concerned about like my interview after. Yeah. Like I got to be on point, man. Like yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is where I'm going to make my money here. Like I got to be slick on my interviews. So they get that you have a second fight. And do you know who you're fighting? I don't know yet. No, like they're pretty. All I know is that I'm fighting March 3rd. And then the next one after that, if it all goes well. So do they not tell you to like the night of? No, they'll tell you. But like they're just, it's pretty last minute from what I've been hearing from some of the other fighters. So they're just kind of putting it all together right now. I should know this week. We so, should try to go to that. That looks fun. It is so fun. So which city in West Virginia? Uh, Charles. Is there more than one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. I want to they're, say they're Charleston. more like villages. Yeah. Does, does Charleston sound like a city huh? in West Virginia? Uh, maybe. Morgantown? Uh, Morgantown's a, yeah, it starts in the right? sea. Place, right? It's like the heroin capital of the world. I think probably that's where they're finding a lot of these fighters. <laughs> yeah, that's probably yeah. where half these yeah. writers are coming up. Uh, yeah. No, I was just wondering if you're flying to Pittsburgh, you're in West Virginia pretty quick. Yeah. So, like, that guy I fought, he's from Pittsburgh, but like, sounds like he's from West Virginia. But like, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was fun, man. They play music the whole time. The whole crowd was just lit. Everybody was yeah. wasted. Like, how many people were at this? I would say probably close. I would say between 7,500 and 8,500, wow. if I had to guess. It was at the where the Providence Bruins, their AHL team plays. Like, it was a really nice arena, and it was like the whole bottom bowl was packed, and everybody was just wasted. Like, the whole place. Like, I can only imagine how well they did on beer sales. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. You need yeah. to step their game up on the ring girls, though. That was yeah. pretty brutal. Oh, yeah. That was yeah. What happened? The ring girls? Oh, they were brutal. Tough. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen I videos of them like falling like, in the You mean like oh, not attractive? I think they all were like they were twer- talking about was like them twerking the whole time. Yeah. And nothing that you want to see twerk. <laughs> yeah. Literally. I think like, that's a part of the brutal. thing, though. Some people do that. I think that's they, for somebody. In West Virginia, probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's, I think it kind of fits <laughs> the vibe, though. It's like, yeah. hey, we're going to like slap this show together with like some half ass tough guys. <laughs> and then we're going to like get some half ass ring. And we're just, that's just going to be what it is. And it's, and they're hilarious. The guys on the mics. Oh my God. I've been meaning to go back and watch the whole show, but like after I knocked that guy out, Caleb interviews him and the guy was sleeping. Like he was out for sure. And Caleb <laughs> right away. First thing Caleb says to him, he said, so how do you feel about the stoppage? <laughs> and the guy's like, you know, I think it was an early stoppage, you know, like yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I got right back up. I, he's like, I popped right back up. And I think that video got clipped and it was all over the internet. Like he doesn't awesome. even know what's going on. Yeah. yeah. He's he, like, where he was, the hell am I? He called the re- the referee was a girl and he's like, yeah, he, he, I don't know why he stopped it. It's like, dude, I was a chick. Like. There are like compilation videos and stuff because I think the ring girls obviously get hammered too during it. Oh yeah, where they're like in dancing and like falling all over the ring, like they're falling on high yeah. heels and stuff. Amazing. They got yeah. midgets too, like or whatever you call them these days, huh? little people. That what? Little, little huh? people. Eh, freedom of speech. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> little people. Sorry if I offended anyone, but yeah. yeah, they got like little people fighting too, which is kind of entertaining, and then yeah, man, I it sounds like what Alice used to do with Alice Mania. Do you yeah. remember those? Yeah. I send you clips of this oh. all the Remember time. Remember when Carwin knocked him out with that? He, one had, hand. he had one hand tied to his body. Do you know who Shane Carwin yes. is? What, yeah. Which fight was this? Carwin fought so, Jason Ellis on Ellis Mania, but the deal was, you remember Shane Carwin? Oh, of course. He only Shane, got one arm. Shane had to duct tape one arm, and so he just started clubbing Ellis, like <laughs> knocked him out, though. Like, with one arm. Cold, like oh, hard. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, this was when Carwin was still, like I think, in the UFC and everything. He's like, a big boy, act, though, no? Bro. <laughs> he's a monster. Like, <laughs> like, I'm a big guy, and he makes me feel oh, small. I'm, yeah, he's huge. Yeah, I've been out drinking. He has like, with him. That's a he bad has like deal. Those, like, like I'll fight you with one arm. Like, just give him, give him his good arm. Like, what, what arm? It was isn't even his. It wasn't even his power hand. It was, was his it? left hand. Yeah, my wrestling coach Leister cornered him because um, they grew up together, you know. And, and Leister told me before, he's like, "Yeah, they they want him to kind of take it a little easy." He's like, "As soon as we got to the ring and he was in the corner, he's like, fuck, taking it easy, knock his ass out.' <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's like, he's bro. gonna try to knock you out. He fucking he fucking cleaned his clock, bro. Yeah, that's yeah, funny. That's, it's good entertainment brutal. though. Good entertainment. So with the um, ice wars, when we were watching it, like, what are the rules exactly? Does it matter if you slip and fall down? Yeah. Like, so that's kind of like, so since it's new, like we're still kind of trying to figure that out as we go. You know, like a lot of we're get, doing like so. AJ is getting a lot of fighter feedback, and we're kind of all working together. Like, you know, uh, in the tournament, we did two one minute rounds, which like one minute, like Scott Parker would say, I'm sure DJ knows one minute on the ice in a hockey fight is a marathon. That's a long time. It is a marathon. It's a long time in any fight. Yeah. If yeah. You're going at it, when yeah. you can't step out and take a breath though, like you're attached to the guy, you can't breathe. Like yeah. It's not like gotta, boxing where you're moving in and out. Yeah. 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 Like you guys are holding on to each other. So yeah. it's like a one minute brawl. Yeah. Like, like I was doing when I was training, I was doing like one minute sprints because like it was, you know what I mean? Like there's no, that's all you, pretty much how you got to do it. Right. So yeah. But yeah, so one minute rounds, and then the next time he AJ asked for feedback, I was doing a championship fight, so we did three one minute rounds. 
which was reasonable, I think. And then um, that was, so that's kind of the timeline uh, for the tournament. There's eight fighters. They'll do, um, you know, two rounds in the first, two rounds in the second, two rounds in the third. If it goes to the extra round, like if the, sorry, if they can't decide in the first two, then they'll, they'll have like an overtime round and it pretty much just all goes to that. And is it, is it finish only or is there judges? There's judges. So there's judges in each corner and then there's, um, uh, the not, so that's the thing right now there, we're still like, I've thought about like the different, trying to differentiate a slip from a knockdown kind of is going to be really hard, but I think that's something that eventually will have to happen and then bringing that into it. But as of right now, it's basically like you slip and you go down. It's like, it doesn't matter. Just get, let the guy get up, give him, give him a second. The clock stops and then come back and engage again. Mm -hmm. And then the clock starts. Because even in that fight with the, the the bigger guy you fought with the beard, you could tell you guys slipped. One of your yeah. downs was Swinging a slip. You could tell. Yeah. You, yeah, you were just off yeah. So like, bit. so that was the yeah. So for me, like that was my first like real hockey fight since like 2014. Besides like a little bit of training I had done, so I was like still trying to get my legs back. Felt better and better. And each this one. this might be a stupid fucking question, but the ring <laughs> the ring looks like a little octagon, which I think is awesome. Is it actual ice or is it that plastic no, stuff? No, it's synthetic. So it's uh, the company's called Can Ice. It's probably the best synthetic I've ever been on. Like uh, I've been on synthetic before. I'm like, this is brutal. And when I was training, I was like, this is gonna suck. Like honestly, that's what I thought. Like, is it brutal because it's just it's, it's too slow. So like, if you lean forward a little bit, like you almost have to skate on your heels. Because if you lean forward a little bit, you just toe pick most of the time on uh, synthetic. Uh. This synthetic was like slick. So as soon as I got on it, when I got to River Cree, they're like, hey, you can synthetic set up. You guys can try it out. I stepped on it and I was like, whoa, this is good. Like yeah. it was really slick, way more slippery than I was used to. So it's like plastic? Yeah, it's like okay. a plastic and it's got like a lubricant like in it, I guess, or whatever. But it's like, there's a River Cree. pretty good. River Cree has. <laughs> Who's the lube guy? Cream? Who's yeah. the lube guy I don't on set? Be that guy. Yeah, where's exactly. the fucking lube, dude? Lube me yeah. up, K L K Y. You have, you have one job. Yeah, because <laughs> the, the River Cree has an ice rink, right? Yeah, or is that synthetic too? No, they do. No, no, they have an ice rink. The problem is, is like, well, they want to do a big production and stuff. Like, if you watch the the show, it was like a pretty good. Like, the, yeah, the no, video it was good dope. and stuff. So that's why they wanted to do it on that side. Is uh-huh. because it was like better for production, and they wanted to go after pay per views and stuff. So, so they they're like, well, if we do it in the hockey rink, it's not set up for production. Production, it's all bright and yeah. stuff. Uh-huh. So it would have been a little bit harder to do. So they yeah, the they setup's just, dope. Yeah, so they decided we'll do it with synthetic, and then we can move it around. But the next one that's in Wyoming is going to be on real ice. Wait, it's in where in Wyoming? Giant. It's, yeah. Oh, oh bro, yeah, we're going to be there for yeah, sure. Yeah. It's going to be special so that, guests of our family. Oh, that'd be amazing. Company. You guys come sit with us, and that's when. We don't know yet, oh, right? Okay. Yeah, it's kind of up in the air right now, um, but that's, that's should like be coming off drive. Yeah, we're, we're there, definitely bro. going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. hundred percent. Oh yeah, yeah. we'll have Fuck the yeah. Uh, yeah Parker's platoon and uh, Taboo Social Club corner. We'll have the mm-hmm. Rollies. Yeah, Minnesota <laughs> smoking Rollies. Yeah. Yeah. Hype corner and the crowd. You can be crowd. smoking. Smoking. Rollies yeah. Yeah. We'll be smoking yeah. and staying hydrated all in one. Yeah, let's let's go. Absolutely. I'll hit. I'll smoke a Rollie in between my rounds. Hey, that would hit the internet like no other. If you came walking out with one lit, just like. Basic, that would be legit. Right? I should do that for Rough and Rowdy, honestly. Yeah. yeah. I know a guy. I'm pretty sure Pac-Man Jones did that at the last Rough and Rowdy. Came out like, smoking a did. joint. He was he gone. Nobody knew where he was. Like, he was supposed to walk out. And, like, he was in my, my, me and him, our dress rooms were attached. And, like, nobody knew where he was. So I, like, walked back. Like, nobody could find him. And then, like, Portnoy's on the mic or whatever. He's like, I think he's smoking a blunt in the back room. <laughs> <laughs> and then legend. he finally comes out. And he's like, oh. He's like, oh, I didn't legend. know I was up. Yeah. So is, is Ice Wars starting to take off? Like, is are they trying to build this into a big promotion? Yeah, so, like, the whole plan is basically, like, they want to be, like, a big organization and kind of, I think the, they came off to a good start. Like, they came out with really good, uh, like, they put on a good show and, like, obviously every show gets better and better. So, um, also, too, we're having, like, um, the, I felt like the quality of fights got better at the second show. Yeah. Then the first show, because like to be honest, at the first show, like I I kind of like set the tone for training, because like everybody's like I trained harder than everybody, and then I won the whole tournament. Yeah, and like everybody's like, oh okay, well we actually got to train. Like it's not just a hockey fight. Like a lot of these guys are coming in thinking like, oh yeah, I've been in a million hockey fights. I'll show up. It's a hockey fight, but a normal hockey fight's like twenty seconds, thirty seconds. Whereas like the, this is like a, I trained like it was a UFC fight or, or boxing match or something right. where I'm like I need cardio. cardio yeah like like I was doing sprints with Caleb every day like Caleb was just dragging me through the mud like just just making sure he's like dude like you have to be 
in this kind of shape or you're just, it doesn't matter how tough you are. Yeah, if you're yeah, gassing yeah. out, you're going to get beat up. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so the next ice wars, everybody's seen that. And I had a lot of the guys that were fighting calling me and like, Hey, what were you doing? Can you help me out? And then they started to, to, um, to I mean, charge them for that. Should I get no, 10%? I should have. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be like, I, I didn't do anything. I just showed yeah, up. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? I was smoking, I was smoking rollies the whole time. I had a beer like right before I came on. Yeah. You just yeah. got to go to Denver and hang out. I think it's like 10,000 feet. These so. hockey enforcers though are a different breed. Like complete different breed. Like my my dad trained with Lauren Lando and yeah. Lando Performance in his off season, and at the end of the day, we'd go back to our ranch and we had this massive Ninja Warrior course before Ninja Warrior was a thing. Climbing Donkey Kong ropes, swimming through the water, coming out, shooting guns, <laughs> and then there's my dad over there wrapping chains around his hands. Yeah, punching trees down, literally. And you're, I'm just standing there like, absolutely not. Like I'm I'm good. He's like, clean your room. You're like, yep. I'm going to do that right now. I did that twice yeah, today, yeah. sir. Yep. Uh, I uh, actually already did it. Yeah. Sti- I still have like, ho- I still have like teammates and like guys around the league, like ask me about that. Cause they know, I know the Parkers. So like, Hey, like, is it true? That, like Scott Parker used to like wrap chains around his hands and like, hit the bag and hit trees and stuff. I'm like, you know, like I wasn't there, but like, I would not have doubted. That, like, he I would on not glass doubt for yeah. breakfast. He I am sure a bowl of glass. Yeah. Do you remember? Uh, savage. Do you remember that in ice guardians? Like he was doing that. It was just him, like yeah, yeah, yeah like, and he's like, it makes my hands harder, punching trees. Yo, one, of, one of the things that they said in Ice Guardians uh, that I was going to ask you because I know Chris. I think anybody who's about to get in a fight has nerves, right? It doesn't mean you're afraid of it necessarily, but you get that you get that sort of nervous butterfly. Do you still get Do you still get nerves? Not too bad, really. Not no? really at all. You I, get desensitized, maybe a little bit too. I don't. Yeah, I guess I I feel different about it. I'm just like I'm not going to die. Like it's. I've said it before. I think you guys see like, his last bare knuckle fight. Yeah. Was, yes. Dude, fucking okay, amazing. Incredible. Wow. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's just watch Chris. Wild. Watch Kamosi just sleep somebody. I'm like, oh. yeah. Like the yeah. first <laughs> 20, 20 seconds <laughs> slaps. <laughs> just yeah. the slaps. It's like you can hear it. Just, you, so do you oh. get one of the guys in Ice Guardians? I believe said you know his anxiety was high, and he. I think I don't. I can't remember if it was Ice Guardians. Another one I watched about. Did you guys see the other documentary about that hockey player? who uh, was a, a legendary enforcer, and then he got really into coke and got caught coming back and forth. Probert, probably, Probert. Maybe. The guy was a fucking G. Yeah, oh, probably, 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 probably. He was. I know he got he died, right? Yeah. He died. He yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right, he's absolutely. He's got a great, there's a great book about him, too. Dude, his, like, cocaine stories about, like, just coming back and forth across the border with, like, an ounce of cocaine. He even had his, his own special. Gr- yeah, guy was a fucking. <laughs> you haven't heard this? The uh-huh. guy's a beast. Yeah, and uh, he'd get stopped all the time, and he'd have like a whole grinder full of fucking coke, and they'd just the wave boat, him through. Take the boat back and forth between yeah, Windsor. Yeah, this dude. Yeah, that's that's Probert. So he said he's so the it, Wayne Gretzky of hockey fighting, essentially. Yeah, okay. guys, no question. You know what I mean? If no you haven't question. seen this documentary, go check it out. This guy is an absolute animal. It's on Amazon. Huh? When I when I see tough guys wear his number, I'm kind of like, yo, what the fuck? You don't, wrong? Deserve, you don't that deserve that. What are yeah, you dude. doing? Aren't retire. you a tough guy? Like, yeah, yeah. It's like obviously players are gonna wear 24 because it's not like a thing. Like nobody wears 99 because she's the great one but like if you're a tough guy i just want to say this right now if you're a tough guy and you're wearing 24 you're a clown <laughs> you, are. you are he was my dad's third nhl fight when he was a wow. rookie wow, that's wow. Wild. and my dad would tell you like the night before he was just like well here we go like i could die oh, tonight yeah. he's like getting his affairs in order and fucking, yeah literally yeah. writing his will you you're know like, dad why are you talking third to me NHL like that? Game, yeah yeah you know writing his will like, so he said it. he said in that documentary which i thought was interesting because he's such a tough guy and so wild that his anxiety towards the end, that's how he got sort of hooked on pills and things that he knew every night he had to battle. And he kind of went through like the mental part of it where he was like willing to admit, which I thought was cool. Him and I talk a lot on this podcast and we've had NFL guys in here, tons of tough guys. It seems like there's always an alpha in here. And uh, we talk a lot about mental health and like, you know, um, you know, navigating those waters and that kind of thing. And I just thought it was cool that he was willing to admit as tough as he was that like, Man, I still get fucking so worked up before I get oh, yeah. to the ring. And, like, I know I'm going to fight. I know it could go bad. Do you deal with any of that? Like, any of the anxiety or, like, the, like, the ant, like. Yeah, I think, like, I would imagine it would get easier. But, like, yeah, like, I, I felt it. I felt it more in the second Ice Wars for whatever reason, more than the first one. I don't know why. I think it's just because I was busy. Bu- like the second one the I was one. busy. Yeah, but, mm-hmm. like, at the second one I was busy. So it was, like. You didn't have time to like worry about the next fight, like where the, the or sorry, the first one. I mean, where the second one, I just sat around all night. I was the last fight of the night, main event, 
And I was just like, kind of just like thinking like yeah, for hours. Yeah. And I'm like, Oh man, like, can I just fight right now? But like, yeah, like I remember my first game in the central league going into, I can't remember where we were, but I remember, I think it was in Wichita and they had like three or four, like legit heavies on the other team. I was like 22. It was NHL lockout. So everybody kind of came down. So all the tough guys moved down in leagues. So like all, there was a bunch of legit guys in, in the league that I was like playing against. And I just remember being like, just like, I couldn't even think, you know what I mean? I was just so distracted. <laughs> the coach was talking and he's like saying like, we got to do this. We got to do that. And you know, you, these guys are playing with this guy, this guy's playing with this guy. And then I'm just spaced out. And the coach is just like, Amesbury, you hear that? And I just like looked over and I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like I'm good. He's like, are you all right, kid? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm fine. He's like, okay, you're playing with so-and-so and so-and-so. I was like, yeah, okay. Like, all right. Like I, I, I didn't hear any of it. Like I was just like in another realm. Yeah. But like when I got out there and I like was able to like, you just kind of do it. You just drop yeah, your gloves yeah. and then it kind of goes away. But like the, the anxieties I think are normal. I don't think, I don't think they're a bad thing. And I, I've always, yeah, thought, I I've, I've always talked to them or talked about them and kind of, I've never been one to be like, ah, nah, I've never felt that. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. But I would imagine that over time you just condition yourself just like anything to deal with it. And you just probably don't feel it as strong, just like adrenaline. Yeah, yeah you know, adrenaline when you're doing something or whatever kind of starts to get less and less and less. Yeah. So yeah his I story he, was, uh, uh, sorry, I want to hear that. I'm excited to have your dad on the cast and talk more about this. Cause again, it seems like a theme that comes up a lot here in this room. Um, his story was especially sad too, because you know, once he left the league and he just didn't feel like he had anything left and wasn't this tough guy anymore and was like, you know, trying to figure out fatherhood and, what do I do with my time? And I think that's even when the drugs got worse, you know, um, his story was really rough though. I thought, I th did think it was cool though, how they turned it into like, Hey, if you're struggling with this issue, which I know your guys' whole program is about is helping these guys transition from yeah, one platoon. thing to the next. Yeah. 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 That's um, Parker's platoon too. If you want to check it out. Yeah. Maddie will link you. it. Yeah. Appreciate that. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's such a cool mission to have. Cause you. You, you have these warriors. It's, it's even worse, like in the military, like these guys, like these special forces guys come home and it's just like, people forget that they've given everything. Yeah. And, and, and it, I would even say with athletes, like, you know, you, you grow up your entire life. Your identity is rolled up. It into is. That. And you're training for this one thing for so long. Uh, it's sad what happens yeah. in the end. You feel pretty empty after when you're done. Like I was lucky enough to to leave and and go through that and then now i'm coming back so now as i play i always tell the young guys i'm like man like every conversation i have on the bus every little thing like i'm in the moment now because i was able to miss it mm. and i was able to go through that so we're now, turning into those now guys i'm doing like, it again now like i'm i came out of retirement i'm playing pro hockey again now i'm like i'm able to like get back into it i'm able to enjoy uh, all those moments but I'm, i always tell the young guys like don't overlook this. Like, yeah. You know. Cause it'll be gone one day for sure. I mean, absolutely it will. You can't play forever. Yeah. And then you have regrets or anything. I love that, that we're turning into those guys that like when we heard that, we were like, fucking shut up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, fuck are you talking? You hear this here, old guy? Right? Sure, yeah. old man. Beat it, nerd. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Go put some Ben Gay on. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, man. Well, um, yeah, this was dope guys. I'm so yeah, glad you guys came it. in. Yeah, we'll put the link in there. Thank you. DJ, you want to you wanna talk about it a little bit, though? Yeah, I'm happy to. Because you guys so, have so much cool shit for them to do, too. Yeah, so our charity, it's called Parker's Platoon. And uh, both my grandfathers on my mom's side and my dad's side both served in Vietnam. And it's our, it's our passion to help others and veterans, especially in current military <clears throat> active members. So we do a lot of things. We do camping, fishing, hiking, biking, whatever the guys need, if guy needs to get his prosthetic fixed. We, they need a service dog. They just need to come to the mountains and have a day. We mm. set that up for them. Um, it's, a, it's just a really special thing, you know, and we just, anything that we can do to help, we're, we're here to help. Yeah, you guys, you guys are creating that's our thing. tribe, yeah. You guys have, like, lodging and everything for them. It's, like, a cool setup. I know your mom's told me you guys have, like, snowmobiles, boats. Um, yep. It's just, like, a badass, like, adult summer camp kind of thing and yeah. winter camp, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's a lot of cool it's resources. It's literally the, the locker room. Yeah, You know, what happens at the clubhouse is what we call it stays at the clubhouse. And we want guys just to come and be themselves. We're not doctors, but we are here to help, and we can get you with the right doctors. But come and just be yourself. Come yeah. and hang out with the athletes because we say same team, different mission. And a lot of the veterans coming home and a lot of our friends that are enforcers that all fought my dad, 
you know, they all come together and they transition together. And yeah. it's absolutely incredible to watch. That's amazing. You know, if, if we could help one person, we did our job, you know? Yeah. And to me, it's, it's just, uh, it's a blast and it's absolute, like, it's an absolute shit show. <laughs> like, these guys telling their stories I are come absolute hang out, man. shit show. Yeah. Like, the funniest things you'll ever hear, you know, because you guys all trust each other, right? Like we're all athletes. We all have done something. It's that same shared yeah. experience and trauma and well, his hardship that you've gone through too, but like connects people. And his dad like fought a lot of these guys. Now they'll get together and like drink beer and like talk That's about amazing. those stories. I would love stuff. for our company, Fitso, to, to contribute to this somehow. Well, we would love to have you and appreciate that. So thank you. And, you know, I would love to get my dad down here. I want to tell so many stories, but I, it's not my place. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I can want- only say them from like the sun side of this, but um, it's, uh, it's a really fun special thing what we do and the you know my mom is I'll, actually the one that kind of holds everything together she doesn't get enough love for it. i want to yeah. get her Francesca's on here i want to get here, her on here with parks because she's great oh, yeah. i think you, you just need her, her by your by yeah. herself <laughs> let her go. that'd be fun literally just, my dad wind her up yeah, yeah. Her my dad's teammates would come out of the locker room when he was playing and be like man your dad's fucked and then they'd be like, oh, hi, Miss Parker. Like, <laughs> like, way more afraid of my mom than my dad, you know? Like, I got to say, though, like, so the cool thing, like, Parker's platoon, like, even though, like, when I went, originally went through my retirement and I was going through it, I had, like, a really dark four-year period, just couldn't figure it out, just didn't know what I wanted to do, was lost, right? And I was able, even though I was in Vancouver, I was able to rely on, like, the park, the whole Parker mm. family. Like, I could call Francesca. I could call Parks. I could call DJ. And they helped me any way they could, put me in touch with people in Vancouver that I could meet up with. Um, so And, like, just having that and just having somebody that I could phone, that was, like, that was enough for me to be able to weather that storm and get through it. And now I'm back playing hockey again in Denver, seeing them again after, I think, eight years I haven't seen them for. That's so. amazing, bro. It's awesome. been great. I'm happy yeah. to have you here. Yeah. Yeah, if you guys know any veterans suffering or dealing with any kind of issue, yeah, Maddie will link this, yeah, look into you. it. Um, yeah, I think it's just incredible work. Uh, but, yeah, guys, this has been amazing. I know you guys want to get in the gym and film some stuff. Yeah, let's do some training. Um, yeah. We'll film it. I don't know where we'll insert it, but we will. Uh, Jump in, too. I'll get in there. All let's right. go. Let's go. Um, again, thank you, guys. This is dope. Yeah, thanks for having us.